How's it going guys? My name is Splattercat and welcome to the next episode of our Splattercats Indie Shorts. This is a game that I've been looking forward to reviewing with some apprehension because it's a game that requires a bit of forethought. This is Wazhack, a side-scrolling roguelike that is actually quite good. A lot of roguelikes have the tendency to be poorly put together, but this one manages to do the job. So let's go to new game here and you'll notice that the music crops in. That's because this game is currently in beta, so it's a little early to be doing a review, but it is a game that I want to get the name out there for. I do want to showcase it, and I do want to show it off. So right here, first and foremost, before we go down this ladder into the dungeon, you get to choose your character. So we've got the Knight and the Valkyrie. These are our fighter classes, and if you look above, they've got their name, their alignment, which affects various things. The alignment, I haven't really noticed how it plays into it yet, but I have heard that it does play into various decisions, kind of vendors and things of that nature that show up. Down here at the bottom, you can see that we've got various stats, which are going to be useful. And they're standard. These are the standard stats that every D&D-like clone uses, and I like that. There's a familiarity to that that makes me enjoy it a little bit more. There's no deciphering and figuring out what the weird skills do. You basically know already. And so here you've got the good caster classes, which are the wizard and the white witch. Actually, she's got an evil alignment, and it keeps going back and forth. Is she always evil? No, she can be good too. So you can see that there's some cyclic nature or some random nature each time you generate them. And over here you've got the more typically evil. You've got Banel the Sinister, which are your sorcerer and your sorceress, which tend to be evil and neutral. And then you've got the Huntsman, which is going to be your ranged kind of roguey dexterous class. For the purposes of this Let's Play, I think I'm going to go with the Valkyrie because I don't get to play her very often. I've played the Knight, I've played the Wizard extensively, I've played the Sorcerer a lot. I haven't played the Huntsman yet, but if you click down here, you can adjust your stats. I'm going to adjust Charisma downwards because I don't really care about it. And then I'm going to raise my Strength a whole bunch, and then I'm also going to raise my Constitution. There are hard caps to the top and bottom of these stats based on which class you choose. So you can't, for example, take a Wizard and force his Strength up to 18. You are limited. So we're going to take his stats. You'll also notice that each character has a pet underneath them. The wizards come with cats, the warriors come with dogs, and the scout, I guess, comes with a dog as well. But now that we've picked everything, we are Chaotic Good, we are Kriya the Rebel, and we're going to go down into the dungeon. Now we are a melee class, so we're going to want to fight things close up. You can see that we've got a bit of a storyline here. In a nutshell, the Amulet of Zaw is down in this dungeon, and it is basically the badass king awesomeness. It will make us very rich, we'll be able to buy a yacht, and that is why we are going down into the dungeon, because I've always wanted a yacht. So there's a spell here, Priruchini. Now this random word is assigned to it until we identify it, so let's go through and we're just going to read it. Nothing happens, and so we don't really know what it does. There are false positives in this game. Some scrolls are actually quite literally useless. He dropped a cyan potion and a black potion, so we're going to take those. He dropped a club too, but we're not going to take it. We've already got like a battle axe, so why would we need a club? We're going to smack him in the back of his head while he's sleeping because we are less than honorable, and we'll grab his guts. That's right, you have to keep your character fed, and so we rip monsters' guts out so that they can feed us. Our Dalmatia puppy has growled at something. We don't know what it is. Oh, he's growling at the club. That means the club is more than likely cursed. Now, this is a game that you want to take very slowly because there are a lot of things that can try and kill you during the course of gameplay. I'm also going to... Let's look at our puppy here for a minute. He's got his own stats. He's happy. We're going to name him. We're going to name him Scruffin Muffin. There we go. Scruffin Muffin the Dalmatian. I had a Dalmatian when I was a kid. It was following 101 Dalmatians, the Disney movie. I very much wanted one as a kid, and my parents ended up buying one. They wanted a dog anyway, so I don't know if it was necessarily just for me. We've got a chest here. I'm going to force it open. And we're going to force it with our crude dagger, I guess. And so we broke the lock off. Fantastic. We want to take things out. So, ooh, ooh, we hit a treasure trove here. We've got bronze splint mail. We've got some coins. We've got some unidentified scrolls and an axe. So we're going to take them all. We're also going to go down and it's difficult to target things sometimes. Is that lamp... Oh, it says it's a cursed lamp. Never mind. We don't want a cursed lamp. We want a lamp of goodies and greatness. And so you can move with the WASD keys. I didn't talk about that before. You'll notice the anima the anima the animations. The animations are a little awkward. That's because I believe this game was made by a one-man team. Now, we've got a blank scroll here. Not going to worry about it. Going to leave it right where it sits. Just leave it where... <laughs> it's a leverite. Leave it right where you found it. That's a geology joke. Anyways, we're going to cleave that goblin to death, and we're going to take his apple. Give me your apple, goblin! And so his apple is now my apple. There's a black robe right there and a blue gem. Now, you don't want to equip things. You'll notice I picked up that armor and you're like, clearly, Splattercat, you probably want to equip that, right? No, absolutely not. This game has a lot in common with old roguelikes like Nethack and Powder, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, 
expected. A lot of those more difficult roguelikes in that you don't know what's going to happen when you equip this. It might be cursed. Now we don't know and so until we can identify it, I'm just not going to take the chance. We'll pick up that black robe as well. Hopefully it'll be like a plus four or a plus five, you never know. These gems are mostly for vendoring from what I can tell. You can take a look at them. If we go to our inventory, we can take a look and we can write down knowledge about them. It says some are precious, some are junks. You can't tell one from the other. So some are glass, some are actually gemstones, and so we'll just hold on to them for now. There's a murky potion right there, and I found the best way to test my potions out and figure out what they do is just to throw them at my enemies rather than drink them, so that I don't end up hallucinating rolling around on the dungeon floor thinking that I'm Mickey Mouse on a bender. So let's go down this ladder. At the top right, you can see the map. It's simplistic. It's simple, but I like the way he used the at as our symbol for our notation for where we're at on the map. That's very old school, and I like it a lot. Now we have a whole army coming at us right here, so I'm going to fall back a tad. And we're going to let... Oh, yeah, that's how I like to do it. So we one-shotted those two. We'll take his carrot. We will take your carrot. And we will slay this goblin as well. Now, your pet can die. Just a little word of warning there. My pet has a tendency to die very early. So hopefully it doesn't happen. Our potion is fluorescent. And that instantly makes me not want to drink it. We'll take the money, though. And we will take the potions. Hopefully we'll find something to throw them at. He seems to be suspended in midair. Scruff and Muffin is growling like crazy. I'd be growling too if I was in this dungeon. It's not a very kind place. Things are attacking me. There's a dead lichen down here. But he does love me. He's got a little heart over his head, which is good. I think you can beat your dog and things of that nature if you really want to be a jerk, which makes them not love you. But I, I don't really know. I haven't played around with the pet mechanics too much, but we can give them things. So let's give them some innards. There we go. We'll give him some innards. And then we will fight this rat. It's just a normal sewer rat. Luckily, it's not one of the bigger, meaner ones that you find lower down in the dungeon. We've got a glass wand here. It, it'll probably break within a few uses, but we'll keep an eye on it. We'll take things out of this chest. There's another thing, a split mail and a warhammer. Now, I'm a sucker for warhammers. And now you'll see that our movements have been slowed. We are on the first iteration of burden, so we've been slowed a little bit. That is something that you are going to have to contend with. If we go to our inventory, I think it says somewhere how much we can carry. I don't really know where it's got our encumbrance at. Somewhere here it says it, though. I'm probably just ignorant of it. I haven't played this a whole lot. I try to keep these kind of blind so that they're more interesting, but we can remedy a lot of this by just dropping things. So we've got some morning stars and things. Let's just go ahead and... Oh, wait. I'm not doing this right. Let's go to the inventory. There we go. Inventory. And so we've got two bronze male suits, and I'm tempted to throw one on right now and just see what happens. But I'm going to avoid it. I'm going to avoid my curiosity. We're going to drop that. And he growls at the glass wand, so we're not even going to bother. There's a number of mushrooms here. I don't really know if these are going to be healthy or not. But we'll take them. We will take them because you never want to pass up the possibility of food down in the dungeon. Even if it makes us hallucinate, if it fills our belly... It's probably going to be useful to us in the long run. And this guy is riding a rat. What a badass. This guy is like my hero. And so we are taking damage. So we may want to let the dog take the forefront on this. There you go, Scruff and Muffin. Take him out. Scruff and Muffin looks more experienced. He also looks a little bit bigger. So I think he grew when he killed this goblin. And the, <laughs> the rat had a knife. It's got a knife. And so if there's one thing I know about life, it's that if your rat has a knife... That's definitely a sinister situation. And so we've got a scroll of enchant weapons. So it says here our uncursed axe minus one has been surrounded by a golden glow. That's fine. We'll check this one out too. This is a scroll of magical mapping. And so you can see our entire map has been opened up, which is going to help us in the future. We've got a readme scroll, which contrary to popular belief is not going to allow us to discern the functionalities of the dungeon. A scroll of create monster, which our pet instantly gibbed. So a good day for us, a bad day for the monster. He's probably sitting at dinner with his children and all of a sudden got teleported into the dungeon. I'm going to rest for just a moment so we can get some health back. I'm actually kind of surprised that we haven't leveled. We're beginning to feel hungry as well. So let's eat some stuff. We will eat a blob of lichen goo and our stomach feels content. Contentment is not good enough. We want to feel bloated. We want to be so full that we hate ourselves. And there we go. She's not watching her figure or anything like that. She's just keeping it real. She's eating whatever she needs. She's carrying around heavy armor, burning those calories, getting that cardio in. Pick up that gold. See, and even the act of picking up gold. She's working the abs as she bends over to pick up the gold. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of fitness going on in this dungeon. And so we've got some cheese here, a wedge of cheese. I am a fan of the queso, of the fromage, the fromage. And so we've got a bubbly potion here. That's a lot less threatening than the fluorescent one. Hopefully we'll find some enemies. There's one. So let's throw one at this guy so we can throw things. We're going to throw a purple red potion at this guy. And it looks like it's a potion of paralysis. Ha ha! A blessed potion of paralysis. So we blessed him with paralysis and a titter off spell. 
So we will take that and let's read it straight off. Ooh, a scroll of enchant armor. That's unfortunate though, because it buffed a crappy piece of armor. And we're gonna fight this guy. We'll fight him crazily and we've leveled up our first level up. So let's take a look here and we've got a number of spell or we've got a number of talents that we get to choose from. Every couple levels you get to choose a talent and also as you use a weapon your weapons level up too. As well as your spells. So what I was saying earlier is the animations are a little clunky and the sound effects are not so great. But one thing that I very much like about this game is that it's got a good skeleton. There are so many games out there with amazing animations and things that just suck as a video game. And given that this game is a single man project, I would highly recommend it if you enjoy roguelike. It's very cheap up on Steam, I'm sorry, on Desura. I think it's green lighted on Steam as well, so you can vote for it there. I would highly recommend going and voting for it. I'll put the link for the game down below along with the price because I can't remember what it was. I bought this game months ago. So I'm going to take Dweomery. Actually, let's run through all the skills. So Gastronomy is going to allow you to find more food on your enemies, and it also allows you to discern the value of the food. Dual wielding obviously allows you to dual wield without a penalty. Let's you swing a little bit quicker too as you get further down. The first aid skill allows you to regenerate health faster. The shield parry disables your enemy's ability to critical hit on you, which I may take in the future, but not right now. Weapon knowledge allows you to sense the better weapon when dual wielding. I'm not really sure what that means, but you can see that all of these down here change. So it allows you to identify the quality of a weapon by using it. Now that's not that useful because that means you have to risk getting cursed just to check out whether a weapon's any good or not. We have weapon precision, which allows us to get more critical hits or allows us to get 100% more critical hits when using two-handed weapons like bows and cleavers and things of that nature. Dweomery, which is what I'm going to take, allows us to detect whether an item is cursed or not the longer it's in our inventory or the longer we're standing around it. I'm probably going to take two levels of that because every minute seems about quick enough to discern whether a weapon is good enough for us to use or not. Fury is going to allow us to get more hit every time we get our health down to a certain level, and Nightmare Mode puts the game in Hard Mode, which makes us take more damage, but also it allows us to gain more experience from our kills and level up faster. So let's get back to the game here, because I don't want to stare at menus for too long. We leveled up again, strangely enough, so I guess we'll level up a second time. I'm going to take that second level of Dweomery, and now every minute we should be able to find out what's cursed and what's not cursed in our inventory, and so there's daggers and short swords. We're going to leave them by the side of the road. We've got a Zelgo Mur scroll. We're going to pick that up and read it right away. And it's a scroll of identify. Identifying allows you to discern all of the properties of an item. So I'm going to look. It's a bronze splint mail suit. It's a blessed plus two bronze splint mail. Yeah, buddy. That's how we do it. And so where is that at now? Oh, we can identify again. Let's identify the other one. It's a blessed plus zero. So what I'm going to do is let's go to our equipment menu and I'm going to take the blessed plus two and we're just going to equip that. All right. And there. Yeah. AC plus seven. How wild is that? And I'm going to go to my inventory. And we're just going to dump the rest of the stuff. Let's get rid of the plus zero. We're just going to drop you. We're going to go to our inventory and drop our plus zero as well because honestly, I don't care about it. Now, we're in a really good spot and I'm thinking I'm going to turn this into a multi-part let's play since it is a roguelike. We'll see how it goes until we die. And rip your guts out. Ooh, we had a carrot and guts. I think all of them have guts. I don't necessarily think they drop them all the time. I think we might destroy the guts in the passage of combat, but you know, we need to get as much food on hand as we possibly can. Let's destroy this yellow mold. It looks like it... We're stunned. Okay, and that has reversed my controls, unfortunately. He's growling at the orange potion, so we'll take the golden one, but we'll leave the orange one. Actually, if it's cursed, we can still throw it at things. Hopefully, God, it's reversing my controls on me, so if I hold a direction for too long, it switches it on me, just so you know what was happening there. There are a number of status effects that you want to avoid. Oh, no! We stepped on a booby trap, a sleep trap. Okay. I don't know how long that's going to leave us there. I'm going to avoid going back over it again, though. And he fought a bat while he was... He killed a bat in his sleep. Our dog is the coolest thing on Earth. That is the most awesome thing I've ever seen a dog do, killing a bat in its sleep. A Pruruccini spell. I think this is the one that nothing happens. Yeah, that was the one that was a false positive. So let's fight with that right there. Now, you want to be careful with the acid blobs. That one was an acid blob. It will corrode your weapons and destroy your armor. So I wasn't thinking clearly there. I probably should have left that one alone, but we're going to keep going down into the dungeon. It looks like we've got a strange unidentified key here and a turquoise ring. We're going to take both. And now one thing I did want to stress is that once you've used a scroll the first time and it's discerned what its use is, it actually says that this is now a scroll of identify or whatever once you pick it up. 
We've got a number of goblins here who are trying to fight with us, and I'm not going to allow him to swing through the wall, the corner of the wall there, which I think he was trying to do. We'll kill him really quickly, and we've got a locked chest here. Let's unlock it by bashing it. And let's see what's in here. A jade ring, a turquoise ring, a number of gems, some gold, and a Gany Van Zaya scroll. Let's see what Gany Van Zaya does. A scroll of remove curse. And so the cursed orange potion glows briefly. Fantastic. So it's no longer cursed. Well, I was just going to throw it at somebody anyways. Now we've got a dark blue spell book. What is this? A yellow mold. Okay, as long as it's not rotting my weapons, I'm fine with that. Now the spell books, what you do with them is you go to the read menu. And when you read them, you will learn spells. Now, if your intelligence is high enough, you will learn spells. That is the stipulation. I have terrible intelligence. So, unfortunately, I run the risk of not being able to learn higher level spells. We are going to try and buff our higher level knowledge whenever we can. What is this? Investigate? Sure, why not? A kobold shaman. Oh, no. And he hit me pretty hard. Oh, well, we killed him. That's fine. We killed him mightily. He dropped a mace and kobold shaman innards, which I guess are different from normal innards. Oh, no. And we are just in a world of hurt right now, so I guess we opened up a goblin lair, a kobold lair, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take shield parry, just to give myself a chance of not getting critted, because getting critted in this game is brutal. Every time you hear my character go, ah, that means he has been critted, which we want to avoid. Did we clear that hole out? Good. Now for the looting, the best part of this whole experience. We're probably going to leave most of the weapons on the ground, because I'm liking my axe so far. We will take the potion of paralysis and the scroll of magical melt. Uh, mapping and apples. I almost said melting. Oh, another one. Feed me your XP. Now, the good thing about this, oh, we are taking damage, unfortunately. Oh, no! What happened there? And so, oh, it's a cybolt. He was psychic. So, what did we learn from this whole course? So, we died, unfortunately. We had a good thing going, but we no longer lasted. Alas, we've passed from this world. So what did we learn? Don't open doors that you find in dungeons. They will probably get you killed. Now, we're not going to want anything else here. Actually, yeah, identify our possessions. That's one of the cool things about this game. It looks like we've got... Yeah, we had a cool pair of boots that we could have used. We had a sapphire and a ruby. We had a skeleton key. Toxic mushrooms, so I'm pretty glad that we didn't... Ooh, we got some really good rings down here, too. Unfortunate, unfortunate. So this game never plays the same way twice. You are competing for a score. So the deeper down you get, the better your score is. So that's really what your goal is. We're going to quit the game. Now, would I recommend this game to you guys? Absolutely. I would definitely recommend you check it out. The game just crashed on me, so I am going to have to splice that in. It is in beta. There are little bugs you're going to run into. It crashes on you regularly, but it is a good little game if you can get past the bugs. It's a lot of fun. I would heartily give this a recommendation, so check it out. I'll put the developer's website down below. I will also put the Desura link down and the Steam green light because I do. Des I think this game definitely deserves a look from everybody who's a fan of a roguelike. That being said, my name is Splattercat. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I will see you in the next episode of our Splattercats Indie Shorts. Take care out there, everybody.